From the campus studios of Sarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hello, listeners, and welcome to another Ropecast, our podcast series about teaching and learning English. Hello, Peter. Hi, Roger. Good to see you again. So what's on the agenda? Well, Roger, last time we wanted to continue our little chat about, well, basically not always following course books or grammar books yes. when you learn a language, but to rather look at something that is interesting to you to explore the language yeah. rather than to learn it. Yeah. I was actually hoping you'd have a few ideas on that. <laughs> yeah, I think... Um, if if you want the teacher to be more flexible, to, uh, okay, plan lessons, but not necessarily religiously follow the plan during the lesson, then we need to think about the learner's side of this. Um, mm -hmm. Thinking here of the school situation rather than learners who are just out there trying to improve their English any old way. But how, how do you, that's what I'm asking myself actually at university as well. Yeah. How can you get learners to, I would say, take responsibility for their own learning if they, that's what they need, yeah. right? To sort of find out where could they go. You couldn't just tell them, okay, take a book, read it. Mm. Um, that's maybe too free, isn't it? Oh, and le I think learners need some training, shall we call it? Learner training. Learner training, yes. Mm -hmm. Learning how to learn, really, especially here, how to learn English. Mm -hmm. And there are certain things that are helpful and Others that might mislead people into thinking they're making progress when they they aren't really. Mm -hmm. And we know the major factors. I mean, motivation is a huge factor. Would you have any tips for our listeners how to sort of start exploring? I think as a teacher, you have to pick the learners up where they're at right now, which uh -huh. means think about their age, think about their cultural situation, mm -hmm. maybe a range of cultural backgrounds these days in school and above all at university. Mm -hmm. So you need to be at least partly informed about the, the background of these kids. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're going to be maybe raising topics which are taboo or mm -hmm. which are just not within their range at the moment. That's the teacher side of yeah. it. Uh, which gets me to thinking, I think one piece of advice you could give to a learner is, uh, don't just sit there. Absolutely. Don't just sit there and wait for the teacher to um, give you bite-sized chunks of knowledge. And don't be afraid to ask about what you want to learn about. Yeah. Um, if it's politics, let it be politics. If it's nail polish, it'll be <laughs> nail polish. <laughs> um, if it's sports, let it be sports. But And if it's something tacky or I don't know, just don't be afraid. Just don't sit yeah, there. Yeah. And, of course, bring in the stuff. Bring in, I don't know, your guitar. I want to know what this is called. Whatever. Yes. I think it's one of the recommendations of that book that we mentioned recently is... Uh, the Carpenter and the Gardener. Yeah, be mm -hmm. sure of yourself. That is, have some confidence. Don't think, I don't know anything. Mm -hmm. You maybe know very little about English. Then ask. Then try to get that information. And not only from the teacher, but from all the sources available. There is Learn the internet. <laughs> People, you've heard about the internet, haven't you? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> this is how learners can be active. They can actually consider for themselves what what sources of information are there. If I'm not sure if it's reliable, then I can ask the teacher, what do you think about such and such? What would you do if your teacher didn't you know, react all that favorably to it, however? I'd try elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> of course, at university you can do that, yeah. but at school that may be hard. Yeah, I think with young learners they have to be very reliant on the teacher and the teacher's preferences and the teacher's understanding of the teaching and learning processes. Actually, I think that's where the parents come in oh, yes. as a final yeah. word. I think as a parent, and I am a parent, you have to tell your children, well, go there and ask him yeah. or her. Yeah. Uh, ask him or her to do this with you. Yeah. may not always work, but sometimes there may be a teacher who's just sitting there waiting for some kind of input from the student instead of them just sitting there as a silent mass waiting for the teacher to do his bit. 
But you know, Peter, the, the most important thing of all for learners is learning is hard work. There is no way of avoiding the work. You have to do the work. It may be fun sometimes, but not always, but you have to do it. And you can't blame the teacher. I can't think of a better final word for this podcast. So let's just say goodbye to our listeners and hope you will tune in again for the next podcast. Bye. Bye bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial. Thank you.